You've all seen issue templates on GitHub, but have you seen one like this? Let me create a bug and get started. And look at this, you've got the title, it's the same, but look at this form that you have behind me. How awesome is this? So people can have a checkbox and it's required. Look at the red star, it's required. So they cannot submit. If I untick that, the submit button is disabled. And as soon as I tick it, and everything else that is required is filled in, now the submit button becomes available. This makes it so much easier. People don't have to understand Markdown. It bridges the gap between the techies and non-techies. Other people can raise issues. They don't have to know Markdown to raise issues. It's great if they do, because they can still fill in Markdown, it is a test, and still preview it in each section. But this is just so much easier. So we're just gonna have a quick run through in this video on how you can achieve this really easily for your GitHub repo so you can stand out. If this sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe below, and don't forget to hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. So how does this work? Well, like before, you would create the .github folder if it doesn't exist already in the root of your project, and then another folder called issue underscore template, just like here and it makes sure it is case sensitive. Put it in capitals. That's what the documentation says. It might work without, but that it might not work in the future. To so avoid any weird bugs in the future, just have it the same as the documentation. And then the name of your template file, in this case, bug.yaml. And then inside, again, it's the same as before. You give it a name that people will see on the page. So if we go to here and we go create a new issue, the bug icon and the name is there. And then underneath, you've got the description, file a bug forward slash issue. Again, it's what you see underneath. That's exactly the same. And the title, it pre-fills it for you. So if I hit get started, it's what's got pre-filled up here as well. Labels, what labels to be assigned. That's exactly the same. But what's interesting and what is new is now with the YAML syntax, before you would do it as markdown with a bit of YAML at the top, a bit like the Jekyll template for GitHub pages. But now we will specify what is the type. So in this case, we first of all, we have a checkbox. What attributes does it have? Well, we want it to have a label. We want it to have a description. And the options are label, I've searched for existing issues and required is true. How awesome is that? So people cannot submit an issue without filling in the required information. Like brilliant. Now the quality of what we get as project maintainers is going to increase. But also at the same time, we're lowering the barrier to entry for people to contribute to our projects. As you see, the next one was a text area. This is not required. And again, we add the attributes like label, description, validation, required, false. So I could change this to true. For your one, you could have it true or false, whatever works for you. I also really like it how on the text area, you can have a description and then value. So in this case, now we've got some examples and we've also then got the value automatically pre-populated in the text area. But another thing we could do is actually a drop down, and we could separate this into two drop downs maybe the environment and the version. So let's add drop down as an option. So here's one I took from the documentation and prepared earlier. So we're gonna have type drop down, we're gonna have ID of browsers, and these are the attributes so label, multiple choice, we're gonna allow for multiple choice, and these are the options available. So let me commit this. Usually I'd recommend giving a proper commit message, but in this case, it's just a demo. I'm just gonna hit commit changes. Okay, so now we can see kind of a preview of what it would look like. We always get the table with the uh, configuration. And now you can see the form getting rendered. That looks pretty cool. Oh, look at this drop down. But let's see what it looks like when we actually raise a new issue. So let's go back to the issue list. Let's say get started. And you've seen all these before. Right at the bottom, what browser are you seeing the problem on? Drop down and you're allowed to select multiples. And that looks really, really awesome, really slick. But we can't submit the issue yet because we haven't selected the required checkbox, as you can see uh, the red star. I hope you found that useful. I'm really looking forward to seeing people use these forms and allow our projects to get a much higher level of quality and more people involved. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the new GitHub forms that we can use in the issue section, and we could just do it with YAML. Hopefully we'll be able to add these to pull requests and other areas soon as well. 
Don't forget to join our Discord, the link in the description below, so we can chat and geek out and collaborate between live streams and video. Just like we say in the Eddie Hub community on Discord, collaboration first, code second. I'll see you there. And then here is the name of your template. In this case, I've called it bug.html. No, that's not bug.html, it's bug.yaml. But we still can't submit the issue because we haven't searched existing issues. I can't talk. What time is it? No surprise, midnight.